Are you wanting to create a scatter chart but all your scatter charts just end up being straight lines like these ones? Well in Power BI you can use a single measure to create a jitter chart and I'm going to show you how in this Power BI for Sport tutorial. Stay tuned. If you are finding my videos for the first time Make sure to hit like and subscribe below so you are notified of future videos. So in this video, as I said, we're going to create a jitter chart and doing that we're going to use a single measure to create a Y value jitter. Uh, and we're going to do a few things though in this video. We're going to first of all convert these values to per 90 values. And then we're going to create our jitter value and then we're also going to create a measure that will help us to highlight a single player on the chart. As some background, I have some understat data which I have downloaded via their API and it's just some simple team player statistics here uh, that are just summarized for the season so far. Um, as you can see, they're all just like sort of blanket values and that's why we have, for example, Harry Kane up here with 10. And we also have Jamie Vardy with apparently 11 XG. Uh, that's his sum for the entire season. So we're going to start quickly and we'll uh, create a couple of measures for per 90 values. So go onto the table, team players, and we'll create measure, and we'll just call this assists p90, and we'll add that to a display folder called p90. And all you're going to do is add a sum of the assists, divide that by a sum of, in this data set it's called time, but that's the minutes on field, and then we're just going to times that by 90. That will give us our per 90 values, so we'll just do that for our assist, and then what we'll do is create a new measure, and we'll call this xg p90 as well, and all we need to do is just change assists here to xg. Okay, now we have both of those, let's add them to our figures, there is our assists, and here is our xg. The next step we're going to create our Y jitter, so we're just going to do that within uh, Power BI here and we're just going to create a, a measure and we're just going to call this Y jitter and first of all we'll just leave it at zero. And we're just going to add that to our Y axis. So obviously at first you won't see anything happen, uh, but now what we're going to do is just go minus and we're going to add a random value. If we just add our random value now you've got our jitter. Uh, what you don't see here is this is going to be 0 and this is going to be about 0 0.5, negative 1, somewhere around there. So what you can do is just go negative, minus negative, or oh, minus 0 0.5, sorry, and that's just going to bring the chart up slightly and set everyone evenly around it. If you change the bands of your y-axis, this will spread out your jitter chart. Uh, if you make them smaller, obviously you're going to get um, a nice wide graph or visual. If you make the bands really wide apart, you're going to get a nice type looking visual. So now that we have that, let's create our uh, value so that we can highlight a single player. So let's just choose Harry Kane. Um, when I changed there, you'll see that our figures adjusted and that's because random uh, the random function will adjust every time it calculates on the page. So your visual will never stay the same. Every time you reload it, it will be slightly different. So now we have him selected there. We're just going to create a measure and we'll just call it uh, player selected and we'll use a selected value to find uh, his player name. Oops. And I just need players. There we go. And then all this is going to be is a simple if function or a formula as a measure within our team players. And all we're going to do is call this color and we'll just go if and what you need to do is use min and we'll go player name. We need that to be team statistics or team players. Okay, so now we have that and then equals and we want player selected. Give me one, otherwise give me zero. And then all you're going to do is add that in your data colors 
as a rule. And we're just going to find color, select that, and you can use is, and change that to number, and we'll create these as a really light color. And then we'll go is, one, and a number again. And we want this color to really stand out, so let's use a slightly different color. We'll go with green. I want the darker green there, and we'll go OK. So there you go, you can see them appear here. If we do the same thing here, go by rules, players, oh, you want color, my bad. And we'll go is zero, number, light, and then is one, number, and the darker green. There we go. What you can also do is add this as a size value if you would like. And you can use that to change the size of your values. If you have it slightly different, you can have it so that he will have, oh, I didn't want wide jitter as that, did I? I wanted uh, color. So there you can see them stand out a little bit more as well. So if I go back into shapes and if I make this say minus 20, he's really going to pop in there. Go minus 25. He'll stand out a little bit, but not too much. Let's do that to the same thing here. So now you can see them both color and size appear on your graph. If I change anyone here, if they appear in the data set, they will have data and you will see the differences. So let's go say song. There. For example, you can change that at the moment because my data set is disconnected, I haven't been able to filter my player table. And that's something you can do yourself uh, in the future. So if you've liked this Jitter chart, use a single measure. Uh, please hit like and subscribe below. Um, and please follow along for future videos where we will continue to power performance through data. Thank you.